We are back with another monthly wrap-up of some of the weird, bizarre, and even scary news to come out of Japan over the last month. So what happened over the last month or so? Let's take a look. Number 1. On January 31st, an interesting tweet started doing the rounds because of, well, how scary it was when you really stop to think about it. Posting on behalf of a friend talking about her own sister, the image said, my younger sister set her phone wallpaper to a stock photo of some random family. How scary. Apparently she did it so that when things get tough, she can do her best for her family. That's even more frightening. As you can see, the photo is indeed of a random family from a stock website. And as always, the comments section is a ride in and of itself. People turned the strange situation into songs, compared it to the movie Parasite, some found it cute, while others were horrified. The original tweeter shared another picture of her friend's sister as well, covered in maple syrup and claimed she was the most interesting person she's ever met, but also one of the cutest too. Indeed. Number 2. The town of Oki in Fukuoka Prefecture is famous for being one of the largest producers of mushrooms in the country, and last year, three adorable mushroom statues were installed around town to celebrate. Because why not? But on December 18th, a visitor who went to look at the statues noticed that two were missing. Apparently one had been missing since July last year, and now it seemed another had disappeared as well. Well, one of those creepy yet adorable little guys was found on December 27th in a nearby river. This guy, named Puriketsu-san, which means, officially, Mr. Badunkadunk, I don't make the rules, that's what the dictionary says, was named clearly for his, well, Badunkadunk. But sadly, that Badunkadunk was missing when the statue was recovered and a town official stated they're not quite sure what to do with him anymore, but they'd still like to put him on display somewhere. F's in the chat for the loss of a great Badunkadunk. Number 3. News started doing the rounds early in January of a tweet that was posted in October last year. In it, you can see what appears to be a giant can of fruit that was apparently sitting on an empty lot next to a school in Yamanashi Prefecture. What was it? Why was it there? Was there a giant yokai lurking nearby leaving giant empty cans of trash? The answer turned out to be surprisingly simple. The empty lot the can sat on belonged to a former sign maker. And, when contacted, the daughter of the company founder claimed that the can was made roughly 30 years ago to display at a trade fair. After the fair ended, it was placed on the store premises and there it remained for several decades. And that's where it still sits even today. There are plans to dismantle it at some point, but until then, if you walk by that lot today, you can still sneak a peek at some interesting local history. Number 4. You no doubt know by this point I love stories of Yankees and delinquent culture in Japan, and this month I have yet another piece for you. On January 7th, a Twitter user posted a photo of their vacuum robot that they'd made some adjustments to. And what adjustments were those exactly? Well, in their own words, they turned it into a Yankee. They upgraded their robot in the best possible way so that whenever it bumped into something, it would spout classic lines like it came just out of a manga. Which junior high are you from, huh? Don't mess with me. And so on. Not gonna lie, if they started producing these for sale, I'd be one of the first in line. My robot sadly just gets stuck on things and spins in circles instead of challenging me to duels. A pity. Number 5. On January 7th, a Twitter user posted some photos of a vending machine. No, this one wasn't made of cardboard, nor was it selling anything especially strange. What made this interesting wasn't what the vending machine was selling, but rather, what it was hiding. The door to the yakitori place I always visited was blocked by a vending machine about a year ago, so I thought it closed down thanks to Corona. But yesterday, I discovered that it actually opens into the store. How the hell was I supposed to know that? It turned out that the user thought his favourite store was closed for an entire year before passing by one day and then, suddenly, the vending machine opened and a customer walked out. 
The vending machine actually works, yes, but it also now doubles as the door to the shop. It was specially made because the shop owner thought it would be interesting, and it cost about 800,000 yen to install. But, as was evident with the Twitter user, over the course of the year, many people didn't realise it was a door, and numerous deliveries even found their way to the pub next door instead. Whoops. Either way, they managed to survive both Corona and people mistaking the door as nothing but a vending machine, so well done. Number 6. I'm all about weird capsule toys, and this month we have another. Titled Macho Chess. It does exactly what it says on the box. If you've ever played a game of chess and thought to yourself, you know what, this game isn't macho enough, then fear no more. Each of the chess pieces were modelled after a particular bodybuilding pose, with the king being a lat spread, the queen being the side chest, and so on. In order to create such a superior chess set, actual photos were taken of bodybuilders in the set poses, and these photos were then sent to the prototype makers who crafted the designs. These were corrected and updated until deemed perfect, and the entire process took two years to make. Truly, we live in a glorious era. Macho Chess is available now. Number 7. An article published by an Italian website made waves in Japan last month because of its interesting choice of picture. The article, posted by La Repubblica, spoke about Ancient Rome was a city of immigrants, as confirmed by DNA analysis. But this wasn't what caught people's attention. It was the image attached to it. Yes, Japanese readers were delighted that, for whatever reason, they used an image of Abe Hiroshi from the live-action film of The Maya do Maya, originally a manga about a Roman architect who found himself occasionally in modern-day Japanese baths and hot springs, where he was then inspired and took those innovations back to ancient Rome. Abe Hiroshi, a man who freely flies through space and time, wrote one commenter, and more shared pictures proving that Abe is indeed a man of many errors and continents. Number 8. Always on the cutting edge of innovations, last month a new type of shirt went on sale for the work-at-home businessman who still wants to dress appropriately for Zoom meetings, but also wants to feel comfortable in his home. Yes, you can now buy the fake Y shirt for less than 2,000 yen and fool everybody who doesn't know any better. Worn under a jacket, it looks like a perfectly normal business shirt, but once the jacket comes off, well, it can also function as a bib, I guess. It comes in white or blue in various sizes, and claims to be easy to wash and iron because, well, it has no sleeves. If you happen to get hot easily, then this is the perfect shirt for your work-from-home needs. I mean, indeed. These shirts are available for your work-from-home pleasure right now. Number 9. The month wouldn't be complete without some toilet news. So, on the morning of January 29th, a 30-year-old man from Hokkaido was arrested for… spending the night in a toilet. The unemployed man of no fixed address apparently broke into a supermarket in Asahikawa City with the intention of simply spending the night there, which he did. But when cleaning staff arrived in the morning, they noticed the toilet was locked and called police. When police questioned the man, he admitted to breaking into the store to spend the night in the toilet, but that was all he did. There has been no news on whether he'll be arrested for his little toilet stint thus far. Number 10. Finally this month, have you ever wanted to buy your own curse? Well, now you can. The topic started trending on Twitter early in January, and people realised that if you visit the Makari website and search for curses, well, you can find quite a few. Some go for as little as a few thousand yen, others go for hundreds of thousands of yen. Do they work? Well, I suppose there's only one way to find out. You can buy simple things such as charms, amulets, and even straw dolls. Or you can buy a curse, and inform the seller of who they should cast it on. Then they'll do the rest. 
Or if you're afraid that someone will curse you first, well, you can buy a spell that'll send it right back on the caster. Early bird gets the worm, or something. If you can buy a fancy bib to wear as a work shirt from home, then I don't see why you can't buy a curse as well. It is the internet after all. And that's just some of the weird, bizarre, terrifying, and also kind of funny news that came out of Japan last month. But what about you guys? Hear of anything odd or terrifying? Weird or funny? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time.